let's do it. Okay, so it is great to have you here live or in the replay. Leave me questions, leave me comments below. Let's get right into this. So the whisk, famous, fabulous step to do. So what do you do, man and lady? It's the exact same steps. You're gonna start with the weight. Now, the, by the way, I am in socks for this one. I wanted to take them off so you could really start to see the articulation through the feet um, and not in the actual Latin shoes. Plus, we're gonna be doing a lot of this to music today. I figured it's nice to get grounded. All right, really get grounded. So what we start with is weight on the left leg, okay? And you're gonna to go to the side on the right foot and then into a lunge immediately, a flex knee. That's very important. Then you're gonna cross behind, keeping the feet on the floor, take the weight into the standing leg and then move back down, okay? Now that's called a Latin cross. The important thing with a Latin cross is that you actually do cross behind. So as I go to the side, right, to the right, it's immediately into a flex knee. I cannot stress that enough. You need a bounce rhythm. Then you cross behind, then you replace the weight onto the front leg. Okay, so if I go to the left, right, I go ball flat, right, I cross behind, and as I cross behind, I go up, and then it's important that, of course, that I replace the weight coming down there. That's the actual steps. So the way to say this is to say lunge, cross, replace. Lunge, cross, replace. Then we're gonna build up the body rhythm at the end of this. I'm not really doing body rhythm, but you'll start to see the use of the actual like upper body as we create this rhythm and these movements, okay? Grounded, baby, ground that floor. Absolutely, man. You've got to love the floor, all right? You've got to be on the floor, you've got to feel that floor. So let's smash this. You ready, Chris? Are you ready, people? Let's do it to music now. the sudden change of music right there. Anyways, please forgive me. This is live, right? So no edits can happen as I'm doing this. Now, what you'll notice is that, yes, the tempo is fast, music is quick, but very important to understand your footwork. So in Samba, a good way to think of footwork is ball flat, right? Then ball or toe on the back foot, right? Some people are on the toe in the original technique, right? And then of course, as you do that, you take the weight into it, and then you go on to the left foot for a momentarily, and then you replace ball flat. So the easy way to say it is, quite literally, ball flat, ball, ball flat. All right, say it with me, ball, flat, ball, ball flat. And again, ready? So I'll do it so you can copy with me, yeah? So we've got ball flat, right? Extend that toe, ball, ball flat, then again, Ball flat, ball, ball flat. And again, ball flat, ball, ball flat. So those are your whisks to the left and to the right. This dude's got rhythm, my God. This is an old dude who's retired from competing. The body's still, thankfully, not a full on dad bod. Now let's do this to music.
what the rhythm count is. How do we count the samba, typically? One, a, uh, two is the counts, right? One, a, uh, two. That's a typical count. Now, here's the thing. The a uh, is your bounce rhythm. Where do you bounce from, right? Write it out in the comments. Where do you bounce? You bounce through the ankles, of course, the feet, right? So feet, ankles, knees, and then, of course, through the hips. The hips have a different rhythm, contracting, expanding, and then there's an upper body rhythm, right? So we're going to create that a little later. But to keep it simple, and in original technique, most people stop at the hips, right? So I will talk about a bit more about up here later. But essentially, the bounce is constructed for the legs, right? Just the legs and a little bit of the pelvis, yeah, getting the hip action. So when you create the count, it is important to understand what you're attempting here. So the very first part of this is you've got your bounce. So there's your one into a flexed knee so you can bounce out of it. Now, when you cross behind, right, when you're crossing behind, that's your up count, a quarter of a beat. We'll get to that in a second. Then lower the front leg. Okay, so we've got one, right, staying in frame would be good, right, one, then a, two, and then we can go the other way. Three, then a, four, right, five, a, six, and then seven, a, eight, right? So that's your basic count. One or two, three or four, five or six, seven, right up in the window. Yeah, Samba bounce is hard. You're, you're, yeah, Chris, you are right, man. Like it's, it is, this is why I love this step and why we're doing it in this format today, because this step requires a lot of practice. I would just put my music in, whisk, 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 whisk. You don't need to join a gym, right? You will shred the pounds, you'll get abs, you'll put cheese grater abs on you. You'll be able to look amazing to someone if you just do whisks every day, right? It is such a good exercise because you're trying to do it with this correct technique. Starting with your footwork, then adding the rhythm count. Now, please stay with me because the next part of this, we're going to talk about the beat value. But for now, I want you to just count to eight. One, a two, three, a four, five, a six, seven, a eight. And just note that the weight has to stay forward, right? So as you cross behind, you have to be on that front leg, okay? So if you're doing your whisk, you've got to stay on the front leg so you're not going back and forward. So part of this action for you is as you're dancing, is to keep your weight up and forward, diagonally forward. That's going to help you to stay on the front leg, okay? And the balance is obviously very important and that's going to help with the speed. So what's the count again? Write it down in the window. By the way, Chris, we're going to make this easier for you, right? The Samba bounce, hard to an extent, but once you train your body and you have constant practice on it, you'll be like, I love this. More of this, please. Now, let's count to eight. Let's do it to music. Ready? Now it's five, six, seven, eight. You can hear it? Five, six, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, a two, three, a four, five, a six, seven, a eight. Your turn. Show me your steps. Let's go. Last one. Oh yeah. Well done to you. Okay. So what is the beat value of this count? I'd like to take a moment here to say beat value is such an important part of Samba and of course all dancing, especially if you are aiming to become an advanced dancer. You are going to need to understand your beat value. There's a prerequisite. Now, the way I explain it to my students is beat value is how you use the beat, okay? So you've got two, four timing in Samba. Two beats per bar. So one, two, one, two, one, two is your standard count or timing, right? Now, if you put a little ah uh in there, one, a uh, two, that tells you as the dancer, there is a musical inflection, there is something you should be doing because we're saying we are saying something related to the actual step itself. So think of a beat value again as this ability to go between your standardized counts 
and then chop it up and say to you as a dancer, okay, how much time am I on that beat? So for example, if you count one, a two, three, a four, and you dance everything, one, a two, three, a four, oh my God, this is so fast, beat value is so hard. There is no beat value. What I'm doing is I'm dancing on time, but I'm not dancing with correct beat value. And that is the starting point of rhythm, right? So what do we do? Let's make it simple. One, a two equals three quarters of a beat, quarter one, three quarter, quarter one. Say with me now, three quarter, quarter one, three quarter, quarter one, three quarter, quarter one. You put th three quarters of a pizza and a quarter of a pizza together, you have a whole pizza, that's one beat. And then you have a giant pizza over here because you've done a lot of whisks this week, so you can have a second pizza. That is your beat value, three quarter, quarter one. Now, what that means now is you don't dance the ah uh ever again in your life with the same feeling as you do the three quarters of a beat or a whole beat of music. So now you can start to see if we dance this together, right? You've got three quarter, quarter one, right? Three quarter, quarter one, three quarter, quarter one, right? Three quarter, quarter one. Now the important thing here is to make your body here short. This is what's gonna absorb rhythm later. So you're not going like this, three quarter, quarter one. Oh my God, three quarter, woo, right? Because your bounce rhythm is actually absorbed in between the shoulders and the hips, right? And the knees. So you're not trying to go up and down, but that will come at the end of the video. We'll talk about that in a mo, all right? So what is the beat value? Three quarter, quarter one. One more little tip. When you look at sample counts, it's not like rumba, right? So we have beat value, of course, in rumba, but we have eight rhythms in samba. We have slows and quicks and quicks and slows. We have uh, one whole, like whole counts, one, two, as an example. We have a one, a two, a three, a four. So you have different beat values associated to different counts. And it's what makes samba so interesting to dance. But if you approach it by trying to dance every step with the same feeling, what are you doing? What you doing, man? It's like cooking without salt. What are you doing, right? You gotta put a little bit of salt in there. You gotta add some flavor, some spice into your boring ass meat sauce. You have to do it. So you need to understand the ah count for you as a dancer means a quarter of a beat. It also means boom, that you're gonna create a very fast bounce action, but please don't look like you have some sort of infliction, okay? Like I don't want you, <laughs> but thank you, Chris. Appreciate the shout out, man. Pound it out, dude, yes. Right, it's great to have you all here. Karen, the buffalo. Oh yeah, we've got the vultures coming next week, ladies and gentlemen. All right, uh, Bora Mastery. Uh, we, we are in Australia, I'm in Australia, but I'm everywhere, right? I'm gonna be coming overseas. Let me know where you're from, by the way. I'd love to do some workshops in uh, different countries around the world. I think it'd be great to meet you all in person, okay? Now, if we go back to beat value, we're gonna take our one, a two, three, or four, five, or six, seven, or eight timing. We're gonna now jazz that up with some actual beat value. And what are you gonna count? Three quarter, quarter one. Three quarter, quarter one, right? Three quarter, quarter one. Whoop, three quarter, chicka bum. Three quarter, quarter one, right? So the, I don't care how slow you go, but here's what you need to know. It, going slower doesn't mean you change the beat value, all right? So stay with me on this, it's important. So if I do beat value in a whisk or a volta, it doesn't matter what you're doing, right, Karen? Like, it doesn't matter what you do. If I slow my tempo, which is the speed down, I'm not gonna change the beat value, but that's what people do. They say, I'll just go slow today, Bowen. I'll just slow it down a little bit. Okay, just practice it slowly. I'm like, no problems, but do it with the correct beat value. So if I go slowly, I still show it. Three quarter, quarter, one. See, I'm using the whole count there. Three quarter, quarter, one, All right? So you don't slow it down and then keep everything the same tempo. That's what really traps people. I hope that actually helps you when you're going forward because the beat value action is, uh, it's really discussed, of course, when you want to become a, a top dancer, right? And you're a competitor and you want an edge, that's going to give it to you. But our medalists, the people we want to look great on the floor as social dancers and lead well, they want to have that rhythm action, right? You want to show that. So beat value is your secret ingredient, okay? So remember, it's just one layer below the actual rhythm count of your routine, all right? So it might help to ask your teacher, hey, what is the beat value of these steps? Because one quick side note, oh, this is important before we practice it again, is that when you do promenade runs, for example, they have a different beat value. So not every count, sorry, not every rhythm count 
in your routine will have the same exact beat value. So I'm gonna give you a, an idea here, okay? Look at this, this is a Samba promenade run, to count a promenade run, okay? So if I wanna take it from the beginning, I might count it one, two, three as an example. But the beat value is three quarter huff, three quarter, three quarter huff, three quarter, three quarter huff, three quarter. So don't worry about my feet, bad feet, but the idea there was the beat value. It's not the same as three quarter, quarter one. And the reason is there's no bounce and it's a different action. So your routines, you can start to see why Samba looks so interesting. It's so different depending on the choreography, okay? Anyways, let's rock it out. Let's get into some practice. Here we go. Ready? Let's go, come on. Quarter, quarter, one. 